Mercury Neptune aspect in the horoscope. And you can find out if you have the Mercury Neptune aspect by going to my birth chart calculator at astrolada.com, for which I'm putting a link here. And just enter your birth details. You don't need to know the time of birth. It is okay. You still get the right aspect. And then go to the planetary detail table below the charts. And you can write to me the sign and the degree, don't forget the degree, of Mercury and of Neptune. And I will tell you if you have the aspect. And there are two types of aspects that can happen between Mercury and Neptune. They are the easy ones and the hard ones. The easy ones, if a person has them, usually shows that a person has already worked on those topics and those um, uh, themes in past life. So they already come quite talented uh, in regards to Mercury and Neptune energies. And they express them in an easy way. And usually just the more positive aspects that I talk about, the more positive um, sides of those two influences together will manifest in their life. Well, the hard aspects will go through the more negative uh, manifestations as well of those two planets. And eventually in eight, later age, they will develop and they will exhibit the positive sides as well. Or they will run simultaneously. So Mercury, first of all, is the planet of communication. And Neptune is a very foggy planet. Uh, and especially with the hard aspects, there can be a lot of miscommunications into the life of the people with hard Mercury-Neptune aspect, like the conjunction, the opposition of the square. They might say something and others might misunderstand them and they might be like a chain of events that happens that, you know, it kind of creates some kind of a gossip or some kind of scandal. These people are often very susceptible to scandal and to gossip. And often them, themselves they will in, initiate such kind of a gossip as well. They like to, it's not like they're malevolent in some ways, but they, they can gain kind of pleasure out of talking about other people behind their backs as well. It can be an inclination with the hard aspect, as we say. So these people have to learn to channel their mercurial energy into more spiritual or artistic channels because Neptune is on the high level is extremely creative and artistic energy. If they leave it to the lower level influences, and especially in the early part of life, they can be distortion of facts, they can be gossip, they can be more involvement in such kind of a gossip as well, and they can be the object of such gossip as well, and they can be often uh, mistakes as well, mistakes when reading, when spelling, missing little, little details, for instance, and often I've seen even dyslexic people with the hard aspects of Mercury and Neptune, because they'll, you know, they'll They'll not pay so much attention. They'll somehow change the words and letters. And they're not also so good at remembering things because Neptune really highly sensitizes the perceptions because Mercury is our perceptions. And they get so much information that they cannot retain it. So they often, I've seen them, Mercury, Neptune people, they'll write notes and they'll make lists so they can remember those things. And it's a good idea for them to do that because they usually will forget facts and important dates or things that they have to do. So it's often very good for them to write things down. Uh, and uh, as I said, there can be also a tendency, especially with the hard aspects, for a little bit of twisting of the facts. And it might be downright lying or it might be just told, told storytelling. You know, they just like to make a story or when they present the facts, they like to kind of um, um, decorate them a little bit. They like to make it a bit more interesting, a bit more mesmerizing, a bit more fantastical, let's say. So these people on the positive level can be great storytellers. My best friend has the hard aspect and when she says a story, she says it in such a beautiful way. She has everyone like listening intently, you know. Uh, but it might also, as I said, incline to lying, you know, so if you're, you know, if, if you see your child, for instance, has the hard aspect between Mercury and Neptune, you have to teach this child uh, from very young, you know, you have to teach it the consequences of lying because often they can get away for, with lying for long times because they're very good at that. And often it will be just like white lies because Neptune is a very beautiful gentle planets and mercury is the facts and they don't they like to present the facts in a better light in a better light you know in the best possible light so not to hurt someone you know and um, or just to present it in a more magical light as i said 
And it might be, as I said, they're not very good at details. So for instance, they might dislike maths and anything which is with structure, anything mental exercises with structure, like formulas, like maths, like map reading, uh, like, uh, I don't know, spelling, you know. And uh, so they should avoid professions which are very much, especially if the aspect is very close, if are very much detailed and fact-oriented because they have the skill to twist facts. And this can be very useful for other professions, professions which are in the artistic level, in the artistic sphere. For instance, they can be amazing photographers. Some of the best photographers I've seen, they have aspects between Mercury and Neptune because Mer Neptune is this higher vibration of artistic uh, inspiration and uh, Mercury wants to present the facts so they can present the facts in artistic highly creative ways also this is a combination I've often seen in the horoscopes of tabloid um, journalists and journalists because journalists twist the facts and they present them whatever opinion they want in their life they can subtly manipulate the facts you know or people that are journalists in the tabloids yellow papers as well that you do you know um, some kind of um, uh, gossip journalism or journalists which are basically copywriters who have to or advertisers who have to present the truth in a more beautiful way in the written form or maybe through pictures maybe through you know uh, they're great to make advertisers some of the best advertisers not salespeople salespeople they need to talk and all those kind of stuff but usually advertisers who present um, a product glamorize a product this is what neptune mercury does they can glamorize everything they can in be inspirational when they talk or when they present something and because that's why they're great for these creative areas and some of the best musicians are mercury have mercury neptune aspects hard or easy ones i mean mozart had the hard aspect these people tap into both planets neptune and uranus are the higher level knowledge of humanity which is the um, the subconscious collective, so Uranus is more like um, to do with um, scientific and discoveries and um, uh, social ideas, while Neptune is much more to do with the creative side of the subconscious, with the creative side of uh, the higher reality, you know, this, th there is something called Akashic Records, there is something called um, um, such vibrations and currents of information around us which are Neptune, Uranus ruled and Neptune is the more creative side of those so these people can tap into those and actually Mercury and Neptune people can be much more easy to express themselves not in words but through music the language they understand best is the music language is the language of musical arts so some of the best musicians like Bono, like uh, Mozart like uh, Bob Dylan, I think he has the hard aspect as well. Lenny Kravitz has it. I, I mean, like if you Google people, you see that some of the best musicians, especially lyricists, people who write the lyrics as well and the melody, this is such a gift. They have such a gift when they have the Mercury Neptune aspect for that. So the inspiration comes from the creative arts, photographers, musicians, and actors. Because Mercury is the planet of all crafts. And all, uh, you know, anyone who is in acting, who is in crafts, who is in arts is mercurial. This is the skill. Mercury is playing an instrument. Mercury is being an actor, you know, in acting and speaking the role uh, and remembering the role and uh, uh, being, having a craft, ha having a skill. And whether it's pottery making, painting, or, or these all creative arts. And Mercury is the higher octave of creativity. So it creates some of, as I said, the best musicians, the best writers, creative writers, so not the writers which are required to present facts because they'll bend them towards the light they prefer. Creative art uh, uh, writers, creative uh, lyricists, poets, Neptune's words, Nept Neptune's art is poetry and music. So some amazing, you know, Byron, I think, has also this aspect between Mercury and Neptune. Uh, and... Uh, uh, actors, I just googled very quickly, and the first three actors that came, the three, the three of them had this aspect, you know. Uh, and Shinya O'Connor also was a musician uh, that has this aspect and some music. And the art that these people present is kind of mesmerizing. It can take you on an emotional journey. It can speak right to your heart. Uh, and uh, many actors, Angelina Jolie has this. Uh, Matthew McConaughey has the aspect. Um, uh, Russell Crowe, um, 
my God, make Ryan. I, I just Googled most of them that I looked at. They had Mercury Neptune aspect because Neptune merges with another. So when you, especially for actors, it's so important because they can merge into the role, the skill, which is Mercury, the artistic skill. Uh, is highly sensitized and they're so receptive to the role, they almost like they live the role. They, they not only play it, they actually, they can merge with it like a chameleon. That's why they become some of the best actors. Uh, and um, uh, also, as I said, it's good for advertising of people who are in propaganda in some way because Neptune can subtly manipulate the minds of others through weaving beautiful images, through weaving, through subtly inclining the mind, and it's not in your face, you know, it's not like uh, um, the propaganda of the 30s with how Hitler and we're the best, but in a subtle way, but they're great at brainwashing others, so any careers where others need to be brainwashed are great for Mercury, Neptune people, but they shouldn't use it for, for manipulation, because they're great at manipulating and, you know, tweaking the, the mind of others. And I have a friend, my best friend has this difficult, the hard aspect. And if you try and uh, make her guilty of something or accuse her of something, she will twist in such way the facts that you would find yourself feeling guilty at the end. It's a skill, it's an amazing skill, but it should be used for good, you know, because uh, always it, it's creating karma and we want to stay on the light side of things. Uh, and um, uh, let's see, the, especially Mercury is the planet of learning. So they might have difficulty learning in the early part of their life. Maybe they might feel disinterested at school because, uh, you know, they're interested only if you get them into a creative mode, maybe teaching them through music, teaching them through making them in some way through imaginative ways. These children would learn only if, the learning involves a lot of creative creativity and imagination, maybe music. So you should, if you have children with Mercury and Neptune, to get them interested in studying. You have to um, you have to put them in a more creative school, maybe a little bit more alternative school, which is more in touch with nature, which is more you know uh, connected to arts and crafts in some way. This is what will inspire them more. And uh, they're highly imaginative people anyway, you know, so they need to be in such kind of careers. Uh, and <clears throat> so they need also their, their imagination to get captured in order for them to get interested in something and to pay attention to something. And they can't, they're not the ones who would learn by heart, by rote, you know, it needs to be new, it needs to be creative, it needs to be, uh, they don't appreciate the only factual side of studies and learning, you know, they need the magic in it. <laughs> and uh, often they can have this negative quality of seeing only what they want to see and projecting whatever facts they are, projecting whatever they have in their mind as a prayer idea or uh, um, some kind of a opinion, they can project and only see around them this kind of things. So that is something they should watch around again. It's not, it's not only deliberate distortion of facts, it's subconscious distortion of facts. So they see what they want to see. And if they have a fear, they can make it bigger or if they, are, uh, they might be over-optimistic in some ways or sometimes overly negative because, as I said, they just see what they want to see. And uh, they, are <clears throat> they are very impressionable people as well, though. And often this combination is known for having psychic skills. Because Neptune is the planet that merges, that it's the people who have telepathy, not tele yeah, people who can read others' thoughts often have Mercury-Neptune aspects. And sometimes when it's the hard aspect, they can confuse that other people's thoughts that they capture from the space around them, they're actually their own. So they're highly impressionable, so they shouldn't co communicate or be in close proximity with negative people or people who have negative habits because they can easily start picking up these thoughts and thinking that their own thoughts and that their own interests. And they can easily, when they are uh, in environment of other people, they can pick up others' interests and make them their own. And they have to learn to separate what is, what is their own interest and what is other people's interest. And uh, even interesting enough, um, Quite a few psychics has Mercury-Neptune uh, combinations or Mercury-Uranus combinations. Both are very possible, very common in the charts of psychic people. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> they can, um, I've seen even in synastry, when someone's Mercury is together with someone's Neptune, 
falls, you know, when both horoscopes fall. These people, I have a friend like my Mercury falls on her Neptune. And we understand each other without words. Basically, we think at the same time uh, about the same thing and then we say it together and it's kind of, a, you know, wow. Like, how could we have thought the same thing exactly? And this is something they tune in into others' thoughts, as I said. Uh, so it's good for psychologists as well because psychologists, you know, uh, can really infiltrate the other person and subtly direct the mind of the other person in the direction they want and they can feel what the other person wants to tell them even when they have difficulty expressing it. Uh, and uh, so great gifts for images, for music, for um, conveying images through words, even though they might be sometimes scared of writing because of missing details or because of the factual side of it. Uh, and, uh, but if it's something creative, they're great at it. Mercury also shows our friends and the people around us, the people that um, we communicate with, and, uh, and siblings. And when Neptune is there, often people can be attracted to Neptune kind of friends when they have Mercury-Neptune aspects, which are people who are creative, artistic, spiritual people, uh, people who are interested in, you know, in the invisible realm, so more refined, artistic people. Neptune is a very refined and gentle energy. And on the lower scale, Neptune energy might attract your friends, which like to escape reality in the unhealthy ways through drinking, through partying too much, through being highly unrealistic, through, uh, you know, through maybe lying a bit more when you have Mercury-Neptune contacts, especially the hard ones. You should be careful of people who lie, if friends around you that might be more, you know, inclined to this kind of behaviors. Uh, and they can be very glamorous people as well, friends around you, because Neptune is an extremely glamorous planet. It weaves whatever magic it wants around it. So these people can be glamorizing and misleading, but can be very, on the higher level, can be very spiritual. And often the heart and the easy aspects will meet a variety of people from both ends, you know. Uh, and this is how they learn how to feel what is the reality and what is not the reality by the universe giving them both of the experiences of the higher end of Neptune, which is spiritual, artistic, highly devotional, highly sensitized and compassionate people to the lower end, which is, you know, people that are more lost, that are more with victim consciousness, that, are, that always need help, that are always somehow being, um, that might be not manip manipulative, but not very truthful, or have some addictions as well, kind of lost and confused and always falling in love with the wrong person, and you have to save them, but both, these are the both. You know, the easy aspects will tend to, to uh, attract more of the positive Neptune types in their life, friendships. And Neptune shows also your... Uh, uh, yes, we said friends, and often these people with the Neptune aspects, they can have... Uh, spiritual friendships, very deep friendships that they feel like an immediate connection of the soul, especially the easier aspects and the, the hard aspects, but later in life they learn to see which are the proper spiritual people in their life. And it's like a soul, almost like their best friends can be, they can feel like these are their soulmates. Uh, and uh, they can find their soulmateship in their friendships. Deep spiritual connection there. And Mercury is um, also the five senses. It rules the five senses all together. Uh, and Neptune can really sensitize the five senses of the person, just like Uranus can. can. While well, Uranus makes it more nervous energy, Neptune makes the person more susceptible to allergic reactions, for instance. Very fine smells, you know, they might feel overly strongly some smells or, uh, or some sound. They can be highly attuned to sounds that we, some of us don't even hear, or colors or sounds or smells you know, that are uh, on a more higher level, different level that we don't, you know, that we can't, uh, that others don't register. That's why they can be, say, they go in a restaurant and there's too much strong smell of flowers, for instance, and these people can say, oh, I can't stay here, I'm getting like a, a, a reaction, you know, they might sound sometimes a little bit like a diva because of this quality, but it's true, they have high sense, senses, that's why a lot of them are psychic as well, they pick up on those invisible realms. Uh, and Neptune is also the lungs in the human body. So the lungs can often be susceptible to watery conditions, you know, um, to keeping water, you know, or to coughs, you know, and, uh, because Neptune is this very watery planet and makes the person susceptible to bacteria, to kind of, um, 
you know, to colds and coughs, especially on the lungs, so they have to be more careful. Uh, and let's see what else. Mercury's friendship, communication, with skills, the interest, the interest the person has can often be very Neptunian. They might be interested in arts and crafts, they, uh, in arts and music, and uh, they might be interested a lot in the spiritual side of life as well. Uh, and reading a lot about the spiritual side of life, uh, the invisible, the in inexplicable, the ephemeral. Uh, and, uh, but first, I want you to remember the most important thing in two sentences. They have difficulties with facts and difficulty sometimes misunderstandings with others and twisting distortion of truth. But on the high level, these are some of the most creative and inspirational people and they have true skill in music, arts, and uh, um, advertising and writing as well, and uh, colors in photography as well, any kind of artistic expression. Thank you very much.